Okay, back with uh, the first of a bunch of examples involving antiderivatives with U substitution. Okay, so what you see over my shoulder here is we have the antiderivative of x plus 7 all to the fifth power. Now, if this was just the antiderivative of x plus 7, if that 5 was not there, it's a nice easy antiderivative for us to get, we would get x squared over 2 plus 7x plus c, and boom, we would be on our way to the next problem. Okay, but this exponent of a 5 really throws a monkey wrench into things. And the, the, the issue here is that we can't just say, okay, let's make this x squared over 2 plus 7x uh, to the 6th over 6. Or we, we, there, there, we, we can't, we, we're not quite sure what to do because we don't have x to the 5th. We have an expression other than, more than x uh, to the 5th power. So this is where u substitution comes in. We have something ugly to the fifth power. So let's represent that, okay? Ugly begins with the letter U, let's use U. All right, so we're gonna say here, we're gonna do off on the side, U is gonna be our ugly item. U is X plus seven, okay? And by making this basic connection that we chose to do, that allows us to do substitution, okay? Because we can rewrite this integrand, and we can rewrite it in terms of U. All right? We don't have to write x plus 7 because x plus 7 is equal to u. So we can then rewrite our integral and we now have u to the fifth. Okay, That works for us because we can antiderive u to the fifth in the same manner that we can antiderive x to the fifth. If x to the fifth becomes x to the sixth over 6, then u to the fifth will become u to the sixth over 6. All right, so we're just doing a nice basic substitution here so that we can use our basic antiderivative rules. Okay, We have a couple of issues that we have to deal with, though. Um, we still have this dx here. So technically, the dx should be moving down, but it cannot move down. And the reason being is that this dx, is this differential, this is telling us the variable in which we are antideriving with respect to. Well, this is all in terms of x. Okay, we have x here and we have x there. So if we've got u here now, then we really need a du. Okay, well, what's du? Well, we can actually figure out du based off of the connection we made between u and x. All right, because we have an equation here and we can derive this equation. We can find the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, the derivative of u we, just means that we take the derivative. The deri u's derivative is du dx. And what is the derivative of x plus 7? That's a nice, easy derivative for us to take. What's the derivative of x plus 7? Exactly, it's just 1, right? x goes to 1, and 7 derives to 0. So du dx is equal to 1. Now, if we just move that dx over to the right side, what we now have is du is equal to 1 times dx. Right? And we don't really even need to write the 1. Right? du is equal to dx. So we actually can kind of skip, right? That step right there, u, when we take our derivative, we have du, and then we move the dx over here, the derivative of x plus 7 is just 1 right there. So it turns out that du is the same as dx. That's not always the case, and most of the time it will not be the case. But in this very basic example that we're starting off with, it does work out that du is the same thing as dx. All right, what does that mean? We can sub dx out of the integrand, and we can sub du into the integrand. So we now have u to the fifth du. We've taken an integral which we cannot antiderive, and we've turned it into one which we can antiderive. This is a nice basic antiderivative to do. Let's do it. What's the antiderivative of u to the fifth? Exactly. It's going to be u to the sixth over six plus c. We're going to treat it just like if it was x to the fifth dx. That's a nice basic antiderivative. We don't really care what the variable is. Whether it's x or u or some other variable, it doesn't matter, okay? We, it, we can use our basic antiderivative rules on any variable. Now, we now have taken the antiderivative, so this is good, but keep in mind that ultimately we want the antiderivative of x plus 7 to the fifth. And there's no mention of x here. So we have to back substitute in, okay? Yes, we used u to get our answer, to get our antiderivative, but ultimately, I still have room to say, all right, we want to have an answer with respect to x. Well, u is x plus 7, so we're going to sub x plus 7 back in for u, and now we are done. x to the 7, or x plus 7 to the 6th over 6 
plus C. That's our antiderivative. That's our answer. How do we know? We can always check. Remember, whenever you take an antiderivative, you can always check your answer by finding the derivative of your answer. Let's do that. All right, so let's just say we have f of x is equal to 1 sixth times x plus 7 to the sixth power plus c. And we want to find the derivative. Okay, well, 1 sixth is a coefficient. It moves down into our derivative. Then we have ugly to the sixth power. All right, chain rule. 6 goes out front, and then we write our ugly, our inner function, to the 1 less power, and then we take the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of x plus 7 is 1. The derivative of any constant is 0. All right, I've got a plus 0 there, since I'm writing everything down. Now look what happens. The 6 and the 1, 6 wipe out. We don't need to multiply anything by 1. That doesn't need to be there, nor does the plus 0 need to be there. What are we left with? We're left with x plus 7 to the fifth power, and our answer, when we take the derivative, matches with the original problem. So this checks out. That's our antiderivative using u substitution. So it's a very basic one. We're going to do a couple more to kind of get everything going for you.